Cow! Oh, that's not how I expected that oh, to go. That hurt. Cow! <laughs> Cow! 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 Yeah, cow! Wheelie! Ah! Oh, really? A fire? Did I die? <laughs> I got killed by a fire hydrant. You suck! Man, it sure would be nice to have a plane. Well, that works. This stunt plane's amazing. Oh no, 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 no! It was amazing. It was amazing. And now it's gone forever. Oh, I want some of that. Oh, is that a ramp? Whether it is or not, I'm hitting it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Whee! Oh, crap. That hurt. Whee! Hi there, what you waiting for? Some of this? Thanks for the nineteen dollars. You got knocked the fuck out, bitch! All right, let's see if I can last a minute. I know a thing or two about that. All right, let's try. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah! Holy shit! Ah! Ah! <laughs> I tried. I tried. Get the fuck out of here, Prius. Get the fuck off my bike, Prius. Get the... Prius? You dead. No. Bad Prius. Stupid Prius. What you whacking into me for? I want some of that ass, girl. Oh my god, never mind. Wood paneling on a car? Hot damn, that's sexy. You must get all the ladies, but sorry today is my day, bud. I'm gonna land on the blimp. I'm gonna land on the blimp. Alright. Come on. Right there, right there. Oh shit, I missed it. I missed it. Ah! This ain't good. This ain't good. This ain't good. We meet again, you little slut. Right there. Beautiful. Now get out. A great success! Yes! I have a parachute, but I don't know how to put it on. So I'm just gonna jump and hope that it's on. Seems like a good plan. Whee! Well, I think that is on. Yes! Like a boss. Is that a Mini Cooper or a Fiat? Either way. Holy fucking deer thing! You can't run from me. Nope, get back here. There we go. Ah, oh, that hurt me more than him. You okay, buddy? I didn't mean that. Oh, God damn it. Why do I do this shit? Well, that went great. You think you're tough, man? You think you're tough? Oh. Watch your head like 30 times bigger than it should be. You want to fight? Oh. Why's your head that big? That's disgusting. Ew. Please tell me that's fake. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, buddy. I just want to play a little game. That's what you get for being a blimp. Welcome, everyone, to Ultimate Gamer Podcast. This is episode 35. Yes, it's been a long time, but you know what? Shit happens. Yeah, it's all his fault. It is. This guy literally started text messaging me like a stalker, telling me I must do an episode this weekend. Because apparently he keeps he texted me for a long while, and then at a, for some reason I'm now mysteriously off his phone. Uh, well, Dude, mysteriously off. that I switched from an Apple phone to an Android, so you just never made the cut. <laughs> I never made the cut, even though I'm the one who pushed you to it. <laughs> well, well, this guy is gonna hate me because I might actually be switching to the iPhone 5s. Uh, I don't hate when a dumb person starts eating paint. <laughs> they already have a lot of things going against them at that point. <laughs> That's how you view me, as a dumb person who eats paint. Oh, don't worry. I view everyone like that. Apparently. You're not spe special. <laughs> no, I'm not the short bus special. 
<laughs> no, no, more like a But you know who is day. the short bus special? Microsoft. Yeah, what the? F <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to cover, um, well, there's just two things that are pretty big. Uh, for one, uh, a Microsoft employee's son decided to be a retard, or as Andy puts it, short bus special. Pants um, on head retarded. Yes. Uh, I put the video as a mirror on my channel. Some people thought I was said dumbass. Yeah, but no. Uh, no, my family does not work for Microsoft and I do not have access to a console. So the guy uh, decides to film his face. He uses his real name as his YouTube name. Yeah. And he just shows off a, uh, con uh, uh, an Xbox One console that his parents have. So... Congratulations, little shit. You just cost your parents their jobs. Good job. Good job. It's going to be in the poorhouse for the better part of the, you know, like immediately after the video. Yeah, well, if I was the parent, I would probably try to kill my son. I probably would. But. Probably be too easy, but yeah. Microsoft fucks up even more with the Xbox One NFL ad. So the First very ads we're going to see for the new type of ad spots, but here's the kicker. It has no games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought it was very bizarre, too. When they first show off, I saw it on TV. I'm like, oh, look, you know, Microsoft is doing an ad. And I'm like, wait, 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 what? Why, why there's no games? Why is it that you're just showing off NFL and how you could have your fantasy sports teams and shit while you're watching TV? What the fuck? Whoa. Oh my god. It clearly shows where they're they're aiming towards. They're aiming towards the frat house dumbasses that just watch NFL all day. Yeah. They, they don't give much. a shit about the gamers. You know, it, I would have given them a little bit more respect if they did their first ad as saying, Hey look, you can get Call of Duty on our box. You know? <laughs> no, nothing. The only thing they showed was fantasy football BS that really the t the market that actually puts money into this. They're not going to do fantasy football. They're not going to they do, do it on their iPads. Why yeah. the fuck are they going to buy another $500 thing to do it? They're trying to push themselves into a market share that is not actually providing them enough revenue to be fucking worthy <laughs> of a full progression of this isn't we're not even in the first quarter of sales and they're already projecting nothing but loss when it comes to the actual sale of these new Xbox ones. There's there's nothing that can save it, and they're just digging themselves deeper into a hole when it comes to the idea of putting money towards a demographic that didn't provide them enough revenue in the first place. I don't know. They're, who's ever like focusing or who's ever in charge of focusing the marketing for the Xbox One seems to think that we're in like 1997, 1999, True. <laughs> or worse yet, in like 2005 when when gaming first got into the whole idea of the the dude bro gamer. I don't know. But whatever. I mean, it's just it's just a train wreck. There's nothing at this point that is enticing to buy an Xbox One. You know, they've already said, hey, look, we're going to be putting ads on the dashboard. They've already said that they're going to charge an arm and a leg for you to use half the features that come with the box. Backwards compatibility is not guaranteed. Service yep. is still a ridiculous price. Any new feature or any whatever is... As you said before, not only going to cost an arm and a leg, but going to require a decent internet connection, which, as we've already made pre pretty clear from our adamant viewers, is apparently a big issue from people watching a video on the internet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of the future that we're looking forward to with Microsoft. Speaking of consoles, <laughs> Steambox. Okay, I figured you wanted to transition into that. I wanted to transition into this simply because that we may be looking at... Now, this is the text message that this guy constantly <laughs> sent to me. I, I will literally read what he wrote me, and yeah, you put it okay. in all caps with... All caps with uh, exclamation points and ones. Yes. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? You know, the first <laughs> thing he writes, we need to do a show, all caps, exclamation mark. Steambox.monday.linux.ohmyfuckinggodbbq exclamation mark three times 11 exclamation mark so i write back who is this <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like andy question mark oh sorry about that then he says this up with all exclamation marks 
<laughs> yeah, I, I was kind of pissed, but I couldn't actually project. Then he goes, he goes, oi, bitch, where be ye? Yeah, because he said we were going to do an episode that night. And then what happens was is that night, nothing happened. <laughs> it's called life. Happens. Bitch, it's called being lazy. No, it's called I got a job. And I'm so do working I. at said job. Um, I had, uh, yeah, well, speaking of work, I had to do like some side job where I had to take apart one of those new iMacs, you know, the like ridiculously thin ones. Ugh. The problem is Apple uses a retarded uh, adhesive. It's like a, a, um, a thin, like, f- like, I don't know, like foamy adhesive. And um, and they use several strips across the edges. So what you do is you take like a credit card and you just wedge it between that and then you just slice it. Basically, you're peeling the adhesive in half and then the whole screen just comes off. The problem with that is getting the screen to be reattached requires you to peel off all remaining excess adhesive and you have to put a new he- adhesive down. The bigger issue with that is it's not easy to find the exact thickness of the adhesive they used. You know what? That doesn't actually sound like a problem. That sounds exactly like Apple engineering to me. It is. So what <laughs> overly I did is, complicated. I just I just went expensive. To, yeah, and, and hard to do anyway. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. They say it's not user upgradable. The only reason why it's not user upgradable is because of that damn adhesive. Because once you remove it, the motherboard is a standard motherboard. It's yeah. it's you. It has a desktop processor in it. With you can remove easily. Um, it has two um, laptop memory dims, the so dims. So you can upgrade it. I upgraded it from four gigs to sixteen gigs. It uses a laptop hard drive. I upgraded it from five hundred gigs to a one terabyte um, hybrid drive from uh, Seagate. You know, um, and then I went to proceed to reseal it up. I went to a uh, Home Depot. I bought the three M uh, hanging strips. You know, you can put it yeah. behind like uh, picture frames and stuff. And I bought Wouldn't the two they be pound. Too thick though, because thinking back, they it seem- is it is thicker than the stuff they use but it's better than nothing i mean <laughs> you know the the problem and this is the problem the one time i did it i used their 10 pound stick so it had a yeah. clear adhesive it fit nicely but trying to remove that shit oh my god it was a, a pain in the ass um we even sent the box back to apple we uh, said the screen fell off and that's why we put adhesive <laughs> They all scratched their head and they bought the story. They're like, dude, never use that shit again because that, sh- that shit took forever to get off. And we're just laughing our asses off. So I decided to tune it down a bit. I put a two-pound strip. Um, so it's still hard as fuck to remove, though. Um, you know, But, it, it, hey, all we know now is that this guy now has a super iMac. Um, with a gap in between the screen and the back. <laughs> but the thing has an i7 in it now where it had an i5. So I upgraded it to an i7 uh, 4770S, which is yeah. the low-end version of it, um, as well as putting the 16 gigs and the one terabyte hybrid drive. So the guy's good is gold there. I mean, now, is he using it as a streaming platform um, or is he just using he's it? He's using a- it for Pro Tools and uh, Pro Logic. It's it's a church group and they are doing making their own like religious C- CD or something. Yeah. So they needed something that could handle the uh, audio product production. Um, so they should totally start streaming their servants, you know, like pray on the go. <laughs> All right, we're, not from... tra- we're not turning this into what? pause no, and no, save I'm here. I'm not being <laughs> offensive here. I'm talking about providing a service to the people who apparently need faith bad enough to need it on a CD. You know what? To... You know what they should do also? You know how you have Square and PayPal here? They should yeah. have um, uh, offering to go. So it's, a, it's an app yes. that you put on your cell phone, you swipe your credit card, and you can make an offering to your local church or community. There you go. Make even more money with one of the most lucrative businesses in America. <laughs> this should be a thing. Holy crap, this should be a thing. I should. Hey, I invented it. Okay, you heard it here first. Call it Pray Tech. <laughs> With offering to go, <laughs> just comb your current. No, no, no. Streets. Uh, what's it called? A uh, collection bucket? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no. So, uh, something quirky, something funny with the uh, the. I don't know, Wi-Fi collection bucket or the the collection bucket of the future. <laughs> 
anyway, yes, this, there should be some service providing uh, churches with, you know, on-the-go payments. So that way, ooh, you can do an NFC version of it. So they would just pass a phone instead of a collection pocket. And if people have their Google wallets or NFC uh, card types on their phones, they just have to tap their phones, and there you go. There you go, yeah. <laughs> and it's like um, pray on the go. <laughs> yes, we uh, we do dim discriminate against Apple devices since they do not support the superior method of payment. <laughs> no, no, actually, I got a bit of beef against the uh, NFC because uh, I had to do an analysis for one of my old uh, clients when I was back in uh, Manhattan, and from the research provided at the time and I've actually done some research recently because it's only been a few months and there hasn't been that much of a step forward to it. the security encryptions on NFC are way too fucking open viewers if you have a phone with NFC uh, enabled radio antennas turn them off definitely suggest you turn them off until at minimum if you're on Android 4.4 the uh, KitKat release because we're looking at a huge step up on security. But if you are a current Android user and you have NFC available or NFC enabled, turn it the fuck off. We'll call it PayPal Pray. Pray Pal. Pray Pal. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. At that what's sad is all you have to do is add an R. <laughs> Pray Pal. Oh my God. <laughs> This is copyrighted, guys. I'm sorry, viewers, but uh, we just came up with a brilliant and awesome money-making scheme. I mean, idea. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> to spread the word. <laughs> exactly. To spread the good word. Have you heard the good news? Oh, anyway, God. we got completely off topic. We topic, did, and but we, There were like three shit. transitions to t a couple of other things I wanted to talk about, but let's just bring Dude, it back to the original. You know I am I currently about. doing a video edit of one of PayPal here's... Uh, screen captures like they have like the the guy swiping a credit card through it i'm gonna yeah. i am going to modify it <laughs> oh god uh my you know we could probably actually do this i am no i mean an actual like build the backbone of the system come up with a uh, specific nfc uh, protocols just for it <laughs> you know what we're, we're gonna have to think about this ladies and gents you may have just witnessed the genesis or the birth of a horrible horribly wonderful idea but going back to the original topic, and on we're going to have all but low, low, low rates, you know, <laughs> you know, for the Lord. But <laughs> oh God, I'm going to have so much hate mail this week. Focusing back, okay, on back on onto the Steam box. okay, okay, go back to the Steam box. The reason I'm nerding out about the Steam bots is you're looking at browser size, uh, not browser, uh, what's it called, a uh, console size system. With the capabilities of current, if not next gen, PC gaming capabilities, on top of which, it's already going to come with uh, support for the modding community, support for uh, game building, support for Steam outright. And it's a Linux system, which means that the whole archaic having to pay for whatever operating system on any system like you have for uh, the Edspots with the Windows 8 built in, or with PlayStation that has the proprietary Sony OS. It's open to literally do anything you want with hardware specifically like selected by the developers themselves to run the plethora of games available on their library right now to their most wonderful settings <laughs> without having the horror of, you know, memory leaks, without having the horror of having to install an 8-gig game <laughs> from two disks, which we'll get into uh, GTA later. But... Uh, <laughs> I mean, just think of the possibilities if a PC gaming developer comes up with a console that is the same price, faster, stronger, has a larger library with inherent backwards compatibility, mm -hmm. streaming, you know, file protection, saves, mod community already built in. Can you imagine what would happen if they throw their hat into the ring? I mean, there would be no comparison. Something like a Steam Bots, which... If uh, any of our viewers are techies, you got a preview of it from the XI3 architecture. We were, t I think, I don't know if we ever actually talked about this. I think it was like a year ago. But uh, XI3 worked with Valve on coming up with a set of prototypes for what they wanted the Steam bots to be. And uh, 
thing was is that they had some good ideas. Valve took what they wanted, and then they broke off their agreement with SI3. And then what SI3 had developed, they started selling on their own. The SI3 5 series, the modular uh, 5S series, there are sets of gaming computers or just normal computers, but with the architecture that allows the motherboard to be split up into different parts. One side of it is the power... Uh, power supply, another side of it is the processor and memory, another side of it is graphical and any other accoutrements. And since you're looking at a housing that is like air flows directly through it since, you know, you need very little air movement to uh, compensate for the amount of heat created by this thing, it's perfect. <laughs> you can set it anywhere, it'll keep itself cool, it's small, and you'd be able to keep it modular. You'd be able to change it every few years because it's able to fit with any PCI Express uh, cards. Any, uh, It's got a shit ton of USB connectors in the back. It's got a, what, a modular power supply up to like, I don't know, 800 to 1000 watts. Doesn't matter what you want. You can do anything you want with it. And it has a built-in system in the BIOS that allows it to run multiple th thin clients from it. Cool. It's like every freaking, like, you can do literally anything you want. Anything that has ever been done with a computer, from having a server-side system with thin client terminals, from having a dedicated system for media consumption. And that's available from SI3, called the Piston. Now, the SI3 Piston is great, but it's not the SteamBots. It's only one of like five different companies Valve worked with that came up with a prototype. So most likely what we're going to see from SI3 is just more and more expensive version of the SteamBots. And the SteamBots is going to be a cheaper version of that, more widely available for a, con for a group that's already buying on Steam. Why? Because the majority of you out there already own games on Steam. Now imagine if you could play those games on a TV with a controller. True. I don't know. I'm excited about this because that changes the entire playing field. It's no longer shitty Xbox One, semi-shitty PS4, and nobody cares about Wii U. <laughs> You're still on that. Yes, I'm still on that. PC Master Race all the way. But that's, that's the, the, the teaser that we're looking at right now. While we're filming this, the counter on the Steam Universe expanding page is uh, set to 22 hours and 24 minutes, so... By the time you listen to this, we'll probably be nerdgasming to even more information. True. That, that's going to be fucking awesome. I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on a Linux-based <laughs> console market? <laughs> I think it will happen. But out of all the operating systems, why stick with Linux, even though Windows is their largest market share? even with because, the because Microsoft makes a lot of fucking money. If you go into a full, like, look, they have to license it. You know, when, when you build a Steam box, you know, what are you going to do? Pay Microsoft a fee to run some form of Windows on it? Are you going to pay nothing and have an open source community that basically provides customer support for you? That is true. Don't even get me started about the modding community, which people are not paying enough attention to. I love the modding community, which gets us to the point where I hate... That, um, what do you call it? I hate that, uh, they never released Grand Theft Auto V for PC, those bastards. And one of our viewers actually sent me a message concerning this, that there's a petition out in order to avoid GTA V going to PC. Yeah, that's because they're just a bunch of idiots. No, no, besides the point of them being idiots... Would this be considered, and this I'm asking to the viewership right now, is this considered like a joke thing? Or is there an actual group of people that believe it's not right or fair for it to go to PC? No, the reason why they don't is it's it legitimately, it actually has to do with um, a console war. The problem is you have consumers, people that don't have any financial gain are trying to put their their word in against others. It's a competition basically for dick measuring. And that's the problem. I've always had a problem with the console wars based on how stupid and how low people will sink just to see their preferred console do better than the rest. And this is something that um, you know really brings my blood to a boil because you're basically saying fuck you gamers, fuck you uh, you know community of gamers. 
we don't want you to have any enjoyment out of this game on your platform. And I think that's bullshit. You know, um, is it going to happen? Look, face it. Your your petition isn't going to do jack shit. You're this telling company, me that you're, there's going to be they're trying to write a petition to make a company not make money off its product. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you think that's going to fucking work? Uh no, not going to happen. Which we'll get into how much money these bastards made with this game. Hey, but, wait, but <laughs> yeah, they they justified it. Damn, they're it's a fucking great game. Yeah, but you're telling me my that, problem uh, with the game is it runs like shit on the PS3 and my brother has the uh, Xbox 360 version. They both run like shit. You know. It's so. the limitations of the system and what they're trying to do with a game like that. But what's interesting is how much attention it's garnering, not only from the news, general media, but from politics, from social groups. Not the general, uh, because that always is going to happen. People saying, oh, my God, there's torture scenes. Oh, my God, this is going to, you know, cause a thousand more shootings because, you know, video games are the cause of shootings, not, you know, ridiculously stupid gun laws. <laughs> You're still on that. Yes, I'm still on that because I don't change opinion very easily, you know, without fact. I'm basically the anti-conservative. <laughs> I, I don't like gut feelings. I like facts. My gut still feeling is telling me that this damn video game killed people. Not the fact that, you know, there's about 30 guns in the house. They're all unlocked. Well, it's like that fucking <laughs> four-year-old. You heard about the four-year-old? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was a four-year-old that basically killed his granny. His grandmada. How do you go about that? How do you... Who's to blame in that scenario? <laughs> uh, video games, obviously. <laughs> You know, I mean, the video games basically Obviously, gave yeah, the kid exist a loaded gun. in this gun. universe, and because they exist, they, you know, psychically made this four-year-old who, you know, basically doesn't even understand SpongeBob yet. Of course. <laughs> no one ever questioned why the granny had a loaded gun available to this kid. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome that granny had a loaded gun, but... <laughs> Hey, man, at least she's proactive about protecting herself. I'm not anti-gun. I'm anti-shitty gun regulation. <laughs> Guns, as long as people are responsible, are incredible pieces of machinery. They're, they're basically what push humanity to develop even more creative ways of killing ourselves. But, like, if you're just stupid enough to, like, <laughs> not put enough legislation in order to keep it out of the hands of, like, I don't know, guy like, <laughs> guy like, I don't know, some... 13 year old who thinks that he's actually Master Chief, or some four year old who's visiting grandma. <laughs> to grandmother's house, we shoot the fuck up. What? Obviously, no, this wasn't a. Uh, the four year old scenario wasn't a, a lack of gun control laws. It was just a lack of logic. It was. No shit. But that's not the point. The point is, is that we need to change our perception on it. But moving on from that, because obviously that's going to garner a lot of hate and put a lot of attention away from what we're actually talking about. Dude, you're going to totally love what I did. Maybe. No, I'm dead fucking serious. I, like, while you were talking, I legitimately created PrayPal, <laughs> the logo. Oh, man. And I made it convincing. Oh, God. We, we may actually have just started a business now. Oh, hell yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, this guy needs to see now, PayPal. Talking about charity and trying to be good. I All suggest right. you guys check out Humble Bundle 9 as well as the Humble Bundle Weekly Sale. Really good selection of games. Great soundtracks. What is it? For Humble Bundle 9, uh, it's going to the CPC, Child's Play Charity, EFF, Electronic F uh, Frontier Foundation, and WOTC. These are great charities that are doing a lot for, like, sick children that just want to, you know... Oh, my God. This looks awesome. I just got your... <laughs> I just got the image for PayPal. It does it look better? I mean, I'll, I'll touch up a little bit more, but... I mean, I, I even did it to the point where the, uh, the logo on the phone itself... <laughs> that, will, that looks pretty awesome. Yeah, we'll just call it PayPal. <laughs> We, we need to do this now. <laughs> uh, okay, so now, moving on to Sony. Now, Sony was doing a reasonable job showing off the console, but they did one major fuck-up, and that is they were not going to support external capture cards um, from pulling any video gameplay from their yeah. console. 
What the um, hell? Yeah, they were stupid. Uh, but it looks like they have announced that they are planning on removing the HDCP from the video game aspect of the console. So yeah. you will be able to capture the menus, you will be able to capture the games, but you will not be able to capture Blu-ray. Even though I don't need to capture Blu-ray from a PS4, I just pop it into my rig and rip it. No. Yeah. Which I did. I did four Blu-ray rips yesterday and put no. it on my Plex server. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. He keeps talking about his freaking Plex server. Dude, Plex is awesome. Love Apparently... That is the best now my friend um he's doing what i'm doing but he's doing it the 110 percent illegit way he just <laughs> fucking downloads everything on torrents and then throws it on his plex and oh, there's like, no and, problem with yeah. that oh uh, yeah well there is a problem the quality is shit look depends my blue, on where you my, get your torrents from business. well that's the problem i'd rather get it straight from the fucking disc because i yeah. I, I like a specific bit rate that no one provides my That's my Blu-rays my Blu-rays tend to rip from ten gigs up. So there, uh, a lot of my movies average sixteen gigs per movie. That's um, not true, and I will tell you why. Because if you want high high bit rate, you need to go to the Rebirth of Demonoid. Now it's been going on for the past like two or three months. It's not that big of a deal, but if you used to use Demonoid, which is a private BitTorrent tracker, I used taken to. down. It's back up. It's called D2 Beta or d2.vu if you had an account with demonoid you got an email about this a few months ago so you'll just have yeah, to search so wait, it's called d2 dot vu and it's the same login you had for demonoid it is i'm about, logging in about 30 percent of the uh library was able to be saved converted and then put back up now, every so often, it's not as updated as it used to be because, well, 90% of the people don't even know it exists anymore. If you're listening to this podcast and you don't know what Demonoid is, well, that's your own damn fault for not knowing. <laughs> but for those of you who do know what Demonoid was and why it was so awesome, you can rest assured that it is still alive and kicking. And once again, it's D2.VU. It just shows a devil like smiley face with a halo on it. Yep. I still like the old uh, Now, unfortunately, logo. registrations have not been open for D2 simply because that it, they're still in the beta testing phase trying to get as much of the old Demonoid server systems back up on this new version. But for right now, Torrent trackers are working perfectly. The search algorithms are a bit buggy, so, of course, I would suggest... Fucking A. I got my password uh, back. No, good for you. I've been downloading and testing out, and yeah, you got the classic uploaders like Lee, uh, Lee1001. He was a really good guy that put a lot of Blu-ray stuff up. There was uh, Cyvance21. If you're a demonoid, you know these people. If you're not demonoid, definitely suggest you look into seeing whether you had a demonoid account, because some people were lucky enough to get them and not even know it. If you don't have a demonoid account and you don't, remember or even know what this is and obviously this bit of information is going to be useless to you but just to know that there are a few private trackers out there that if you work hard enough to try to like get in contact with people on uh, well you can do it by Skype it, it just depends on whether you know where the type of people that go to these sites hang out sometimes it's uh, Skype groups sometimes it's Google Hangouts uh, other times you know TCP IP chats stuff like that but Definitely suggest if people want to try out torrenting, Pirate Bay still up and running, but you got to be sure that's Pirate Bay CX, not the fake Pirate Bay. But if you want to get yourself into a private torrent tracker, well, you just gotta you know start Googling. True. <laughs> we can't actually post any of the uh, sites simply because it's going to be a problem for everyone. And if you don't have a friggin' uh, account with Demonoid, going to d2.vu is simply going to give you a page that's you know without accessible information. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad that you uh, told me because I had forgotten completely about it. Um, and it's just, it's basically a red version of the web page. Like, it, it, uh -huh. it's exactly the same thing, which is great. This was Demonoid actually was by, the uh, shit back then. It know? was uh, uh, cr recreated by some of the fans or some of the people that actually used to use Demonoid and had a uh, large Tets files of all the trackers and, and magnets 
and just tried putting them back together because it turns out that right before Demon Ode was taken down, a good few couple of terabytes of just the trackers themselves were put up on Pirate Bay. And a lot of people downloaded them. So trackers are still out there. The uploaders are still, you know, uploading, still torrenting. So as long as the connections are up... And, and, and what have, have we click. learned? We've learned that trying to fight piracy is just a foolish attempt at pissing people off. Like Pirate Bay, it doesn't matter how many times you try to shut down or what country you chase it to. Eventually, they're just going to put the servers on balloons or servers on platforms in the middle of the ocean, and there'll be nothing you can do to stop them. So that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless nature has its way, Adam. Yeah, well, whichever. Speaking of nature... Let's talk about some uh, economic evolutionary status quo. BlackBerry confirms massive layoffs and reveals that by quarter two of 2014, it'll have a billion dollars in loss. Not surprising. Anyone remember BlackBerry? <laughs> I've never owned one. The business-oriented uh, smartphone? Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, if you do remember them, well, you'll understand that once you actually got into business, you learned that IT changed the whole paradigm of needing to have a BlackBerry to bring your own phone. <laughs> With that, it spelled the early doom for BlackBerry. Ever since 2011, they've been limping. Now, by the end of 2012, because of the high price of their phones, and yeah, they were ridiculously high priced, even though they kept saying that they were the most secure, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. Samsung's 128-bit and up base encryption still beats their, what was it, uh, LMN, or what was the encryption for Blackberries? It was a shitty that. encryption that was based at for all uh, governmental uh, use and for, uh, ah, I don't remember. Anyway, all I know is, is that it's the basic uh, encryption system that was used not only for governmental work, but also for healthcare work. And simply because of the fact that they keep their prices up, they can't actually compete in a market where smartphones are getting cheaper, more secure, but, you know, less prone to hacking, or more prone to hacking at the same time. Yeah. That depends. It makes no sense to try to buy a $800 uh, BlackBerry when you can spend those $800 on, I don't know, a Samsung Galaxy S4, S3. Have a shit ton of new features, get a true Android experience, on top of which still being secure. I don't know. Huh. $3.1 billion in loss revenue. Billion. Yeah, in the billions. In the <laughs> so last it's funny years. is that they lose a billion and GTA Five makes a billion in three days. Oh yeah, that was a huge thing. And now your good pal Peter Molyneux said, "Meh, it's not impressive." <laughs> Peter Molyneux, for Peter Molyneux to be impressed by something, it would have to be both indecent and grandiose at the same time. And just the fact that Rockstar is making a shit ton of money from GTA Five, it. I, I don't know. Everyone Which they deserve. I mean, look, the GTA Five. Look, it, it deserves the money. However, I wish they just fucking released a PC version day one because, look, the PS3 version, as I as I tried saying before, and also my brother has the Xbox or sixty version. The game runs like shit. Texture pop-ins that you know are so delayed; they take forever to come up. Now, um, what is it for? Uh, yeah, for the Xbox version, it's an eight gig install file, and most of the Xbox is uh, the Xbox three sixty s that are in every household don't even have that much space. Which so people would have to actually I go out that, and that, buy that, memory. Well, that was the thing. Microsoft made it very clear that no game shall require an installation. Why the fuck? <laughs> is this Are there two game? discs, an installation yeah. disc and a game disc? Now, the, the PS3 or... is the same deal. You have to install it. Um, and it took, uh, it was an eight and a half gig install, I think. Um, they still haven't released any updates for the game, um, which is actually very surprising. Usually, you'll have a day one download for it. But um, no, the, the thing took forever. And then loading up the game. I'm not kidding. I will actually do a test. We will do a test here. He will do I a am... separate video where he times it. Well, no, 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 no. We're, we're going to do a test right now. Like, as I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my console. You heard the beep. <laughs> I'm turning it on now. Uh, and I'm going to launch it. And I will actually say when I hit the X button for the fucking game to load. And then I will tell you when the game lets me actually start walking around on screen. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to do this. <laughs> 
as a test. Okay, I am now... While we do this, we may as well use this time to actually talk about stuff. Uh, well, we will talk <laughs> about Grand Theft Auto V, but, okay, the, the thing is on the screen. I'm about to hit the X. Now, I hit it. Okay, so now the game's loaded. Now, mind you, I'm using a 7200 RPM, 750 gig hard drive that I upgraded, so the bottleneck is not there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the original 60 gig PlayStation 3, the one that cost 599 US dollars, 599 US dollars. <laughs> Rage Racer! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so now we have the, uh, the, the intro logo for Rockstar. Finally loaded that part up. Still can't do shit. And I'm trying to skip it, and I can't. I've been hitting... Um, shit, they use id software technologies. Interesting. Um, Not really. <laughs> so now, you know, I am still still can't play. So, you know, I'm hitting buttons, like, saying, yeah, let's go, let's go. So I'm putting down the controller. Now it says loading story mode. And, yes, we have finally gotten to the loading screen. Of the game, not the loading screen before. <laughs> yes, yes. So now it's actually loading where you left off in the game so you know this at least it's automatic at least you know it's not throwing you into a menu of some sort which will um, have another loading screen on top of a loading screen oh, of course loading so, screenception so it's still loading um that, that's actually what we should call this episode still loading uh <laughs> You know, you get these nice, really nice uh, artwork and stuff, you know, sim very similar to Grand Theft Auto 4. Um, but the music isn't quite as, like, catchy. It's just, you know, a violin or something like that in the background. And it gives you these little tips. You can change uh, uh, characters quickly in certain missions by pressing the down button. Um, still loading, by the way. Um, <laughs> just letting you know. You know, my hard drive light's, like, solid lit and stuff. Um, still loading, folks. Still loading. <laughs> oh, man. You won't even have to edit this. This will be fucking brilliant. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. You know, still loading. Still? Still. I have, How about I have, now? No, it's still. <laughs> we there yet? <laughs> nope. Nope. We're, no, we're not there yet. Are we there yet? Nope. 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 Not still dead. not there yet. I just see, like pictures going across the screen still says loading story mode we're hitting three minutes now i hope you know this oh yeah 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 i had to you know still loading <laughs> i've seen maybe six or seven different pictures of people scrolling around while it's still loading i'm not fucking kidding it's still loading now it has there officially go. gone wow. to Almost a black screen and now it puts me now i am officially controlling the character i'm actually driving in a car an audi so it takes a total of four and a half minutes for it to start from the moment you load it. No shit, yes. Wow. They need to fix this, because that is bullshit. And I've heard <laughs> that for people who have the digital-only release, which I was never going to buy, um, you're a fool for buying digital-only, by the way, uh, The they say it's even worse. Like, the load times are so severe on, the, on it. Um... But, you know, the game just looks so muddy and, like, rough. You know what I mean? It's it's not even running at native resolution of 1080. Um, it's Jesus. The draw distance is ridiculously bad. I mean, I can compare it. I, I'm not kidding. Grand Theft Auto 4 on PC looks better than Grand Theft Auto 5 on PS3. Um, the, I mean, the game is supposed to be better detailed, um, you know, for GTA five, they said they redid the graphics engine. They, you know, made it so it has higher res textures. Well, I'm not seeing it because everything is just a blurry pixelated mess until it's literally like two inches from your face. Then it's yeah. actually high res. Um, even like something as simple as, you know, like if you're going over a bridge, you know, you have like the gated border around it. Yeah. Literally, if you're in an average size car, the um, the draw distance is literally the the length of your car. So the front of your car is where the draw distance starts and it stops at the rear of the car. Oh, it's geez. it's pathetic, um, and it's running at thirty frames a second. Now this is where it comes down to you know everyone's like oh you PC elitist look this shit interrupts my enjoyment of the game and don't tell me we're just happy look we paid six hundred dollars you know seven or eight years ago and we're still able to enjoy games look no they, no you're not when, no you're <laughs> not 
Okay, don't, you know, I know people say graphics don't mean everything, but look, I can't see the fake billboards clearly. The ones that they make, you know, like they always talked about piss washer. It says, drink It's the this problem beer with people that life. are happy to accept half assed attempts at creating video no, games. This game should never have been released on current gen consoles. I'm not fucking kidding. The Wii U would probably do a better job at this game than the PS3 and, and Xbox that, 360. And that, trust me, is an insult, people. That it is, is an, insult. an insult. It's an insult. You know, and the fact that Rockstar is like, we have no plans at releasing this for next-gen consoles. They're fucking retarded. You know, because this game, even though it's, yeah, you know, next-gen consoles aren't quite as powerful as PC, the game would look day and night better and perform day and night better um, on the PS4 and Xbox It's the problem Xbox of putting, One. like, I don't know, a V8 engine, but only providing it with a one-liter gas tank. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it will start, but it will immediately turn off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, that same paradigm of having a V8 engine with, like, I don't know, infinite horsepower butter and a one-liter gas tank is what's happening with the 64-bit processor Apple put in the I Which iPhone 5S. I was laughing my ass off when, what the when hell? they announced it. Even my friend, who he's not quite as like hardware techy as I am, um, he he doesn't really care much for Apple, uh, but he's like, "What the fuck are they doing? Like, there right now, there's no application ever created." for an iDevice that would benefit from a 64-bit processor. And nothing will happen with the 64-bit processor because there's only one gig of native uh, onboard RAM. No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you this, and you're okay, going to laugh. Just, it's sad, but I have watched reviews with people saying the 64-bit processor is what makes it so much faster. And no, they're, like, they're like trying no. to do side-by-side -side comparisons where, where I've had people who... Um, who are upgrading uh, from a 4S to the 5S, and they said the applications don't feel any faster. <laughs> so it, What everyone just... doesn't seem to understand is if you put a 64-bit processing chip on something, it doesn't make it faster. For a minimum of just to get it running, you need 8 gigs in order to be able to turn the damn thing on full. To actually have it fully capable, to actually be able to use a 64-bit processor to its actual base limit. There, you have is, one there is a difference between 32-bit process and 64 with specific applications, such as video editing, rendering, um, photo editing, rendering. That's because of the rendering. architecture of how but, it processes, not because of the speed. Yes, you I know, need no, no, 16 know, gigs on a machine connected to a 64-bit processor to actually be able to say, wow. That is, you know, a punch in the nose. Well, well that, that this is, is the thing. I mean, <laughs> look, when, when we had a 64-bit versus 32-bit jump in, like, Windows, there was a substantial difference when doing video editing stuff because now the application yeah. can handle more RAM. That's the whole point of 64-bit and why people just don't quite understand. An application such as a video editing application that I use will utilize... 8 gigs of RAM just for that one application. Yeah. Um, and and that's why, you know, you look at, uh, like, the consoles. For instance, PlayStation 4. It's a 64-bit uh, processor. There's no doubt in my mind that it's running as a 64-bit process. Yeah. Because that's you, why it needs the 8 gigs yes. just to fucking use it correctly. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, you put a 64-bit processor, which, uh, look, my fucking HCC1 has double the RAM that the new iPhone 5S has. Now, not I'm not gonna, you know, say, hey, look, I'm better. The, the benchmarks have come out. Yes, the yes, iPhone is. 5S is faster. Yeah. It is. But that's where you have to understand that RAM isn't everything. Um, you know, there's an, we are not going to see applications that use more than a gig of RAM for quite a while. Um, on, you know, uh, what is this, it on apps? This yeah. is a stepping stone. That's all it really is. You're not going to have any benefit from having a 64-bit processor in the five, iPhone 5S. Where you there will is start... You're just going to be using more energy, you're going to create more heat, and eventually it's just going to break down because you're paying a higher price to have a piece of technology in your phone that will never be fully utilized, and on top of which is not even being used for its correct purpose. <laughs> exactly, and, and I don't understand because the thing is... Um, when it comes to the phones and applications that have been developed for these phones, um, they, I don't foresee ever the need for no, such actually, a large application. I'm unless unless you talk about you know the Ubuntu phone, 
Yep. That I can understand having a 64-bit processor because well, it, was it is going serving to be the first two purposes. Well, it was going to a 64-bit phone. It was going to have 8 gigs of built-in RAM with an expandable. It was going to be literally a handheld computer. It was going to be an expandable it platform. Was, it was going to be the netbook that never saw the day of light. Um, light of day. <laughs> uh, you know, it just... It is very silly, though, and, and I, I have to applaud Apple because they're the only ones that can speak bullshit and get praise for it. Yep. You know what I mean? We came up with the Fusion Drive. Whoa! And then you have reviewers saying, the Fusion Drive is the fastest thing in the world. It's like, no, no it's no, not. No. I could put a cheap budget solid state in there and it will still be faster. Yep. <laughs> Um, you know, so I have to applaud Apple because they're the only ones that do it and get away with it. I mean, Samsung, I, I, I think Samsung does a better job when it comes to, you know, showing off features and things. Um, and if any of you have any doubt of what we're talking about, just look at the latest release of iOS 7. Then look at an Android phone from, I don't know, which two years iOS ago. Which iOS 7 is buggy <laughs> as shit. I, I, when you I, have an operating system upgrade that makes your system less secure by allowing Siri which, to turn off yes, where's my iPhone I've service heard, for heard. using the control center, which, uh, <coughs> Android, using the control center to be able to unlock your phone without having to input whatever security we measure you about provide. That. There is a day one update for the iPhone 5S that is supposed to improve security for the fingerprint scanner. And on top of that, someone's put a bounty. Um, so far, it's currently at $19,000 that if anyone finds a way to crack into the fingerprint scanner, they will be rewarded with this. And you know someone's going to do it. Yeah. Nothing it's is impervious to being time. broken open. Nothing is that perfect. That's that what we learned thanks to the NSA, it. that there is no algorithm that they haven't already cracked, if you saw the, exactly. up the news last week. <laughs> uh, you have to remember, it's only secure if no one's interested. You know, like, I, hey, security look, through you're obscurity. talking to a person that when I was in middle school, I used to ride my bike to and from. I set my password. I'm not fucking kidding. My password was 1234. Oh, was God. my bike ever stolen? No. It was never stolen. It was easy to steal, but it was never stolen because no one was interested. So I could have put a fake, you know, padlock that literally had no lock. It still would never have been stolen because no one was interested. And that's that's the key. That's why. That is Mac, security through is, obscurity, and that is yes. offensive. <laughs> well, but no, that's why the Mac hasn't had as many viruses. That's People true are like, oh, Macs don't get viruses. Well, it does now because now... Hackers are interested in your platform. Before, no one gave a flying fuck. Because nothing interesting platform. or important was ever on a Mac. When it, it came was to never government worth offices, the trouble. When it came to Fortune 500 companies, everyone went with Windows. That's why Windows is a plethora of of uh, bugs and viruses and trojans and logic bombs and hydra. Just a fancy name for algorithms that are supposed to provide access to certain parts of a system but when now, you know, it shouldn't if, be allowed. When we to. come down to you know Android versus iOS, yes, Android has viruses now, which because has happened. a lot of interesting because stuff is being ninety percent. No, is it eighty percent of people have Androids? Um, so therefore, the market is better. Android to, master race, <laughs> but you don't have these uh, vulnerabilities that Apple's having on day one. Day yeah, no. one vulnerabilities. They discovered one where if your even if your phone was locked with the fingerprint scanner and all that, there's a bug in iOS seven that lets you uh, make phone calls. Yeah, that, that it's not even an emergency thing. You could make a phone call and then unlock the phone after completing the phone call. It's a glitch <laughs> in the system. Now, yeah. what's what makes this sad is this isn't the first time this bug has come up. This bug has come up in previous releases of, of iOS. They fix it, then they release a new iOS version, and then they have to fix that same problem again because they found a new way to fuck it up. Like, I don't get it. It's like Apple with the alarm clock. There, there has been two occasions with a, a alarm clock uh, glitch that I have been the victim of. I was not waking <laughs> up one time because of this bullshit. Um, I had to show my boss the news article that... I wasn't. I was not the only one that didn't wake up this morning because of this bullshit. Yet, <laughs> they've done that twice. How do you fuck up the clock twice? <laughs> I don't get that. You know, clearly somebody's not writing down one plus one isn't three. Okay, <laughs> let's let's fix this logic here. Um, but 
you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm interested in switching back for a few reasons. Now, I've played with new iOS 7. I do believe it's a step in the right direction because it gave the operating system... Because it's system. more Android-esque? <laughs> I'm not... Yes, I'm serious. That's, that's what it is. Now, the biggest thing I miss, and I'm telling you, this is how sad it is. I, I borrowed my father's iPad. Now, it used to be mine. I gave it to him. I gave him the Retina one, the iPad 3, the one that Apple replaced five months later. Those bastards. Um... <laughs> The um, I put in iOS 7 on there. I, I wanted to see how it was, and I also I have to support i i devices at work because almost everybody there has a Mac, an iPad, or an iPhone. I am I'm so sorry. I'm one of two people that have an Android device in that job. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so the thing is, I needed to you know refresh myself on the new OS just in case someone called me up and said, "Hey, look, I don't know how to do something, so I can support it." I go and I'm using applications such as Google Currents. Luckily, Google has a lot of their applications on the iPhone. Um, so a lot of the things I was using on Android. If they didn't, it would be the end of uh, Apple. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using the application and I'm used to like, you know, iPhones only have one button. Android, some phones had three, some phones have two, some phones had four. Um, yep. So my HTC One, there is a back button and a home button. So I'm used to, instead of hitting the back button that's on the top of the screen that's part of the application, I would just normally hit the physical button that's on the phone to go back to the previous page so I can select another article. Yep. I found myself trying to hit an imaginary button that de doesn't exist on <laughs> yeah. the iPad. Yeah. I'm like, wait, wait, I can't go back. What the fuck? And I look down like, oh, that's You know weird. what's worse than that? <laughs> it when you try to use the swipe keyboard. Which I have done so many fucking times. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? I, I'm going like, oh, wait, wait, what? Why is it only the P? I, I yep. put Peter, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it just, I'm telling you, like, it, it's so sad. Like, I've never, I've heard people say they've done this, and I was always laughing. I'm Everyone like, does it. Everyone does I it. I couldn't believe, even I did. I'm like, oh, wow, I really did you get, just too get used, used to it. You just get used to it because yes. stuff on Android becomes, you know, intuitive. It's easy to fall in line and just use Which, it because I'm surprised it's Apple hasn't even done this yet. I'm very surprised Apple oh, no, has not That's implemented their own Apple. version of Swipe. When and Android comes up with a good idea, you just got to give it a year, year and a half, and then it comes you, up as I a new guarantee, idea. I guarantee, <laughs> Apple, with iOS 8, I guarantee you're going to see a Swipe-like feature. They yeah. have to at this point because um, I, I don't know a single Android user that doesn't use either the Google keyboard, which I do believe is better than the Swipe keyboard. It, is. it does the it same is functionality, but I think Google... Uh, nailed it really well. They nailed um, it with the spacing and also just how clear yes. and easy it is to tell. So now, Apple's going to talk about we have a new feature. We call it the Glide keyboard, or you know, some Something, bullshit. Yeah. They're going to call gonna it. It's going to be some cheesy and hipster. And watch like the front page of every news uh, uh, site will be like Apple introduces Glide keyboard. It's the fastest scientifically proven keyboard to be the best out there. And then you're going to have all the iPhone people saying, yeah, suck it, Android. And the Android guys are going to be like, welcome to five years ago. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, and look, I'm not the one to make so much bashing, but I've been on both I platforms. Am. I've been on iPhone platforms longer than I've been on an Android. I've only been on Android for three months. So I now this is coming an, from somebody who... I admit, I did have an iPhone for like two, three years. Yeah. So, so if, if you're hearing us like making fun of the Apple devices, just understand that the iPhone was the first smartphone I ever owned. And Same I here. had I had an iPhone since uh, 2008. I had the iPhone. My 3G. first one was an iPhone three. Yeah, an the, iPhone 3G. The, the 3G or 3GS. 3G. I didn't yeah, have. The I had the GS. iPhone 3G. I got that for Christmas. I had the 3GS because I went through seven iPhone 3Gs that had various problems, ranging <laughs> from home buttons that didn't work to the the top uh, sleep wake button that would sink in. Um, I had ones where the the microphone didn't work and stuff. So eventually, after me having so many problems, they said, "Hey, the new iPhone 3GS just came out. Let's give you an upgrade." So I had that one. iPhone 3GS had no problems. I had it for two years. Absolutely no problems. <laughs> I got the iPhone uh, iPhone 4. Yeah, that's right. I had the iPhone 3GS. I used it for a year, gave it to my mother. 
I had the uh, I bought the iPhone 4 because my contract was only for the iPhone 3G. Since Apple gave me a 3GS, my contract didn't renew. They gave it to me as a gift. So I bought the iPhone 4. Had the the infamous problem that if you went and you held it wrong because Steve Jobs said you guys yeah. were holding the phone Frickin wrong. Freaking antenna. Uh, yeah, the phone would do that. And um, I I had let's see the iPhone 4. I had three of them. Um, one of them I exchanged because of that problem. Second one I dropped it and then I exchanged it for the same problem because I just conveniently said I had it even though it wasn't really defective. And the third one, you know, my mother uses it to this day. Um, I actually rebought it on Verizon because I'd made the switch because at and I was getting like five drop calls a day. Um, I had, <laughs> <laughs> had the iPhone 4. I had it for... Um, yeah, I had it for about a year and a half, so I skipped. The only iPhone I skipped was the iPhone 4S. Um, I, I just, you know, I just modified my phone and put Siri on my phone. It worked. Yeah. Um, so suck it, Apple, for not including that. Or was it Clockwork or Sinogen? No, there was no. I didn't do any of those. I just did uh, the reg. Was it Yellow Snow? Or Red Snow, ah. or one of them. It was one of those. No, Red uh, Snow, most likely. Yeah. I think it was one of those. And I, I ran that, and then there was a, a mod that someone created that legitimately used the official Apple like Siri servers. I put that on second. The first one I put was actually a fan-made Siri server. And it was funny. If you asked it, what is the best phone? It will actually say Android, of course. <laughs> That's universal that was, law at this point. That was funny as hell because people are like, "Yeah, you got this like uh, a gangster version of Siri." <laughs> um, so after that, um, I was on Verizon, and a friend owed me a huge favor, so they gave me one of their upgrades because I didn't want to get rid of my unlimited data. Um, and also on top of that, I still wasn't eligible for an upgrade anyway. So I bought the 64 gig iPhone 5 white. I used that for literally three months. I was so bored with Apple at that point because the OS was the same shit. Just minor additions, um, you know, <clears throat> the same problems I've had with it. Like their their notification center was crap, was half-assed. Android was definitely better in that aspect. I Superior went, in all ways. Yes. I switched to Windows Phone. Um because I was really trying it. I tried an H, uh, HTC, uh, uh, I think it was the Trophy. I tried See, that if one. if we had that phone and you put Android on that, that would have been like the best freaking combination. But my beef was, is that with the Microsoft mobile system, it was too much like Apple for my liking. And on top of which, there was nothing in the fucking market. There was no, the apps market was ridiculously horribly empty. <laughs> it still is. I have, I have three Windows phones. I have the uh, the HTC Trophy. I have the Lumia 822, and then I have the Lumia 928, which I still I hold on to the Lumia 928 because it has a ridiculously good camera inside it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not willing to buy a DSLR. I just I don't. Use I do it agree enough. that it is one of the best mobile cameras that was. It's like the only a, one that has to. a real flash right now. <laughs> um, so it works. But then I ultimately, um, after realizing that Verizon's dicking me over with, hey, you can't sign a new two year without giving up your unlimited, I finally decided to give uh, T-Mobile a try. Um, hmm. I know I've heard nothing but bad things you know, prior. People kept telling me it was the worst carrier in the world, whatever. Um, after they did the whole no contract thing and you got the jump plan, I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to give Android one more fucking try, even though I could have just bought an iPhone 5. On on uh, H now understand, you know, folks, that his last the last time he touched Android what was two point three two point four. Uh, it, it was Froyo. Ah ha ha ha! And I did try Gingerbread a little bit, but it was slow and buggy. Um, so I, at that point, I had not played with Ice Cream Sandwich. I had not played with uh, Jelly, Jelly Bean. Bean. Um, but then uh, with the HTC One with the Sense, um, <laughs> I I have tried um, the HTC Thunderbolt, which was crap. I used yeah, it for unfortunately three days for those and fake I traded GUIs it. or shitty GUIs. Uh, I'm not up for the, that, that, that custom that. version of the, Android. The you OS, need pure Android. The OS wasn't really the problem. The phone had the shortest battery life of any phone I've ever owned. And well, it, if the hardware yeah. sucks, there's nothing it was, you can do. It was the hardware that was the problem. Um, so there's I, no amount of polishing that'll turn a turd. The HTC <laughs> One, I love the gold. phone. I love. I really do. There are just some things OS-wise that have me irritated. 
Um, you know, there are problems where it does crash every time you try to do certain things. HTC yeah. supposedly this month is supposed to release an update, and from what I've heard, it, it makes some substantial improvements. But the the phone hardware wise, I love. I love the phone. I love the the speakers. This is an area that Apple severely needs to improve on is speakers. I'm telling you, I work in an office that everyone has an iPhone, and they love to just play the music on the iPhone. So if they're you know doing some physical work, you know instead of wearing headphones, they'll just blast it. And I'm just like, that sounds like shit. So what do I do? I show them all up. I put on this the Spotify on my <laughs> Android. I play the same fucking song. And I play it with the built-in speakers of the HCC One. And they said, where did you get a boom box? And they come <laughs> over here and they look at my phone. They're like, how the fuck is that phone exactly. given that kind of quality? And I'm telling you, this is there's no contest. The HCC One speakers are the absolute best speakers on any fucking smartphone. There is no denying it. Unfortunately, what I have to add to that is that that is the only worthwhile thing for the HTC One. Hey, Without I love the, it. I love the feel of it. It's very durable. It's got the Apple. It's durable, but it's a single piece thing, so you can't actually remove the battery in case I, I, of a need for look, a hard I've boot, never, for modifying, for anything. I don't know. Look, it's I've not, never had a problem with that. The, the it's argument too that, close to Apple esque manufacturing, which is a my good taste. thing for me, though. I I don't mind it. I love Apple esque like manufacturing because it is no. There is no doubt about it. Apple has the best designed like hardware phone. Um, Negative. My problem has always been with the operating system. It always has been where you know, hey, look. Um, <laughs> my dad's funny. He says, "Hey, stop ignoring me. I need my iPad." <laughs> <laughs> All right, long story short, I gave him my iPad. Um, I told you about the Retina one. I borrowed it, which I had mentioned as well. He told me I could only have it for a week, even though, you know, I gave him two iPads, the original and this one. So he's being a real dick. And also remember that iPhone 5 I had for three months? He has it. I gave it to him for free. (laughs) Even though I spent $400 on the phone, it's a 64 gig iPhone 5. I gave it to him for nothing, and he's being a dickhead about this phone, the this iPad. Oh, whine some more. Oh, I'm I'm dead serious, and he's like, stop ignoring me. It's like I don't <laughs> give a shit, dude. I paid for it. Want to go down that road, daddy? <laughs> anyway, it just comes to the point that when it comes to operating systems, people, if you need to make a choice, stick with Android. It's future proof. If you need to make a choice on hardware alone. Well, it's only it's only it's future it's only future proof if the phone manufacturer doesn't have a stick up its ass and actually releases updates. That is a, it's still an issue that Android still has and that is we don't have like the majority of phones are out of date. Um, that's one area that developers even my friends who are developers say they love the iPhone for is that you're almost guaranteed to be running the latest iOS uh, update because Apple controls it. That's one aspect that I just wish Android would resolve. And even Microsoft is guilty too. Uh, even though Microsoft like controls everything, you know, from the form factor to you know, you name it, the too many people have their mitts on when an update's released. So yeah. your phone is most likely, like even my HTC One, it's been running uh, Android 4.1.2. So it, it's out of date, severely out of date. And, and all the new features such as OpenGL ES 3.0 support is not on my phone. So the real moral of the story is get a Nexus device. You're a Damn fool scary. if you buy anything else. Speaking of Nexus devices, I recently not only purchased one for my own mother, but purchased one for myself, the Nexus 7 2013 uh, second it, generation. It good Love tablet. this freaking device. I still have a generation one. Unfortunately, the uh, screen, uh, the digitizer was cracked, so I'm planning on repairing that down the road. But for right now, I needed something quick. And I have to say this. And speed. quick you got. Oh my god, the display is fucking wonderful. Yeah, full 1080p <laughs> IPS display. You, you can actually even... feel the difference uh, with the newer uh, uh, the newer processor and of course with the 4.3 update. It's I don't know. There's something strangely f- like comforting about the fact that no matter what you do on this tablet, it's always going to be backed up by the system uh, by the Google system itself since literally I have to sign in, turn it on 
in a matter of an hour, which may seem a long time for you, but it was able to download all of my previous applications yep. with all of my previous login information. Yep. On top of which, actually, like how I had set it up in my previous tablet was set up here. My emails, my calendar, everything. All I had to do was log in and let it update. Yep. Installed the new update, downloaded all my previous applications, set them up correctly. I literally had a new tablet in an hour instead of like the weeks it would take for like putting it all together, putting the right apps here and there. Yep, which you know what? Apple has sort of gotten that a little bit better with iOS 7. They finally Yeah, introduced... but don't you still have to pay for that for the cloud no. servers and such? No, 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 no. That's something else. They finally added automatic application updating. <laughs> Well, that's nice. They're that, up that's to, something I that I, I thought was a problem. You know, like I actually once I got switched over to Android, I was like, holy shit, when my phone is charging and it's home, it's automatically updating. I don't have to worry about, oh, let me check for updates or, you know, any of this shit. The phone is always up to date. Yeah, I love it. And I love the fact that when you go on, you can go to Google's website, their app store marketplace on the website. You could buy an application and then you're given a drop down menu. Which device do you want to install this now? You click on that device, even a device that you don't have on you. You could be at work, buy an app, select which device you want, and then push the install. You can't do that with that iPhone. iPhone, they do this whole all or nothing kind of approach where either you have the feature on where you buy an app on your, your one phone, then it will install it on all the other iOS devices at the same time, or yep. you have that at nothing at all. I love Android's approach where you get a choice. So if let's say you have four tablets, you know, two, one for each kid and then one <coughs> for your wife, you could say, well, yep. the one for the wife, I want to give her a specific book or an app. You could just give it to her. You know, you can, uh, you know, say, hey, there is a game. I want only the two kids to have it. You can push them to their devices. And I, and I think that that's something that even Apple needs to work on. <laughs> All I have to say is, Whatever Apple is trying to implement is already very well implemented by Google Nuts's products. Yes. I'm sorry. But I do think that Apple is in the right direction. Don't let the, I will say, don't let the new color palette they use fool you. A lot of people yeah, no. are quick to say it looks gay or it doesn't look, you know, it looks like a, a child's device. Um, I think that's the first Hipster impression. Or some, uh, yeah, I, I thought I thought that immediately when they first showed off. I'm like, what the fuck is this? But to be honest, when you and here's play with it, I actually think it it's reminded really good. me of gingerbread. It actually reminded me of the palette from gingerbread. Well, if you're... it also borrows a lot of aspects from prom pre. <laughs> the card system they use yeah. the card system for multitasking. Oh god. When will they actually choose to do real multitasking and not? <laughs> oh, they do. Uh, have you have you heard they've removed all restrictions on uh, on multitasking? I don't think that would actually be a good idea for them. No, they did it, so it's it's just like Android, from what I've heard. Problem is, is that with the architecture that they provide for the hardware that they have, would that actually be a good idea? We're not looking at something that has a lot of memory to work with. Yeah, that, in the that first was, place, that was stupid on their part. And their four-inch retina display, they're like, and it looks gorgeous on the four-inch retina display. Buddy, my fucking HTC One has a higher PPI. It has 400 and something, and it has and a full 1080p. And don't even get into the Nexus 7 PPI, because that's just mean. Uh, the Nexus 7 has a higher PPI than the iPad. The I, uh, iPad with retina? What is it? Isn't it the one with the highest PPI on the market right now? No, my phone has the highest PPI. No, I mean HTC for the seven-inch tablet. Uh, um, I believe so. Actually, yeah, you're right. No, because the moment we get smaller, of course, the PPI goes up since you have a you know less. <laughs> less I just think therapy. for Apple, it's a media consumption device. Why the fuck haven't they stepped up to the plate and use an actual high definition display? Look, high definition has nothing to do with PPI. It has everything yeah. to do with the resolution. You know, they're saying... And like, resolution comes with processing and output Yeah, but well. you remember when the iPad came out, everyone's like, this is the HD version of the app. It's a high-definition yeah. version. It's like, buddy, it's running on no, a, a, no, it's not. A, a 1280 by, like, 7-something. It's like, dude, that's not even HD. That would be high-def resolution back in, I don't know, 2003, 2004. <laughs> you know, it's it just such... It, <clears throat> you have to... I would, I would respect them more if they call it the high-res edition or something like that, but HD... Yeah. 
as like, okay, so what what if Apple releases a, an actual high definition, which there are rumors they're going to do so. There's rumors that the next gen iPad is going to actually be a 16 by 9 um, aspect ratio, just like the Nexus 7. And they're saying that it will actually support a 1080p like resolution or maybe even higher. What are you going to do? Release your app again, say the HD HD edition? Like, I, I don't get it. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, whatever. I mean, yeah, we went on a whole tirade about phones, but let's just say, I other than the fact that Grand Theft Auto Five came out, there's nothing else interesting. I mean, heck. Uh, it's that for Steam. Fucking okay, Steam box. box. Yes, yes. Oh, and also, before we uh, sign off, I, I, I can't believe I didn't cover this. I bought a while back, um, Nintendo announced the uh, collector's edition of Zelda, um, what do you call it, the Wind Waker HD edition. Yep. There's a collector's edition that they decided, hey, let's just go only with GameStop with. I sniped that fucking shit 15 minutes after they announced it, <laughs> right? That shit is going double price on eBay right now, double the price. Um, but at, Nintendo did this ballsy move. They decided we're going to release the digital version of the game before we release the physical version. So right I now you could download and buy it. And there's this one guy that said 48 hours later. Uh, no, oh no, they said day 48, still downloading. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is an aspect where I cannot take Nintendo seriously. You want to brag about having an, uh, a, a digital marketplace, but look, they don't I'm a, have the back. No one for, is a, everyone is afraid to buy a game from them because it takes forever to download. Yeah. Not to mention installation. Installation still takes a long fucking time. It's on flash memory. Why the fuck does it take so long to install? There may be a problem with the architecture. I, the I do believe there's a, a severe issue. Them. That would explain why the menus... Because why would you want something that's supposed to be a heavy download? And we're talking about an entire game instead of being it's on a disc. Eight, uh, is it 8 gigs or something like Isn't that? Isn't an average a size of a game now when it's on a disc between 8 to 12 gigs? Um, even bigger if you count uh, PlayStation 3 exclusives. Uh, see, when it comes to something like that, that's not really... That's just stuff that they took out of the game in the first place just to make it lighter. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm saying even even digital editions, um, you'll find that Infamous 2, Infamous 2 on on the physical retail disc has more higher resolution textures, has uh, better things in it because they were able to fit it on a 25 gig disc. But the Jeez. digital edition, because they wanted to make it much easier for people to download. Because um, no one's going to download a 25 gigabit file. Yeah, it's. Uh, I believe it's 11 gigs. I could be wrong, but it even says separately digital edition. And from my research, they've actually compressed the textures heavily. Um, and they even lowered the bit rate on the soundtrack. Um, and this is what pisses me off because this throws off a lot of the, the, the actual gaming community to the idea of downloading and doing download-only purchases. Because they think that if you look at you know, downloading a game from Xbox, downloading a game from PS3, downloading a game from any of the browser, uh, not the browser, any of the uh, console systems or the console networks, they don't have the backbone for it. They don't have this, uh, they're not specifically set up to take large orders like mm -hmm. something like Steam does. And well, so naturally, it, it shows that it's a lower res, lower quality experience to download it compared to actually physically buying it, which is well, going to destroy the market. Well, well, look at um, the PlayStation 4. Um, they're they're trying to improve upon that, but I've noticed that the PlayStation what, 3... What, with Gaikai? Or well, what was yeah, it? with Gaikai, they, they said they're able to separate it so you could download the single-player portion first or the multiplayer portion, some other stuff, and they say they can constantly stream. They're doing things that Steam has had for years. Yeah. Um, Steam has, has done that aspect where you can start playing a game... But then again, they're game. dealing with something far simpler and far more elegant at the same time. They're dealing with PC games that from the get-go are built to run no matter what. <laughs> the only thing that changes is the level of resolution and the level of uh, detail. Which, look, my games in my library, any of the games I want, like Bioshock Infinite, which is, what is the size of this game? I usually tell you. It's uh, 17 gigs. Yeah. I can download Bioshock Infinite faster than I can install it off of a, C a DVD. That's true. That's the sad thing. But that's because Steam has the infrastructure. They've 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 gone from very slow to ridiculous speeds. I'm downloading games at 10 megabytes a second. You know, and and that's something where, you know, people kept telling me, "Oh, it's your internet shit." It's like, 
I no. can download a game faster on Steam than I can on the Wii U or the PS3, and I have the PS3 hardwired directly into my Fios modem, which I disabled all firewalls on the Fios router. Okay, I had I disabled all security on that damn thing. And Let's I just hope that. nobody picks up your IP. <laughs> well, that's that's the other beauty is I have everything that has personal data goes through another router, so it's basically it's a bunny hop. So I disabled all the security on the FiOS just for the Xbox 360 and PS3. Nothing Ooh. else is connected directly to that modem. So everything else that so you know, for like, those hardware freaks and uh, gray hats mm -hmm. out there, that just means. Don't go for the direct brute force. Go for a man in the middle. <laughs> yes. You know. So, <laughs> but I had sorry, to do this. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I know. I had uh, to do actually, this. Actually, I'm not sorry, but still. <laughs> Whatever. I had to do this for those consoles because if you have your firewall turned on, the PS3 downloads three times slower. Wow. So clearly, the device does not support um, the uh, DLNA. Or not DLNA. What, what the fuck was it called? Da, da, da. There was something, uh, you, oh, universal plug and play. Universal yeah. plug and play, what it's supposed to do is the PS3 is supposed to say, hey, router, I need these ports open. Can you do it? And then the router will specifically for that MAC address say, yes, I will give you these ports and only you these ports. Everyone else, you have the same old rules. You're the special child that needs extra attention. Um, but the problem is that it's not, it doesn't do it well. And I found a lot of people have to manually open up ports just for that Mac well, address. The, pro the real problem is, is that UPMP no. hasn't been fully accepted by all router manufacturers. Exactly. <laughs> and there's probably the fact that most people never actually do firmware upgrades for their routers that usually add in UPMP. So it's, I don't know. It's once again, uh, the console market tra dragging its feet when it comes to integration and treading on the ground the holy networking ground of PC gaming true because when it comes down to it a PC game will always be able to download faster work faster over the internet because they've ha they've had decades <laughs> decades plural <laughs> of experience working with not only downloading over the internet but running over the internet and providing services over the internet when it comes to the uh, the uh, consoles what, they've only had one or two generations where they've actually used internet as part of their... Hey, do you remember when Xbox Live first came out on the original Xbox? No. I do. I was one of the first few people that signed up. Well, there were only had, two games never, on Xbox Live. I never Live. had the original um, Xbox. I, yeah, I got it as a gift. It was the greatest freaking gift ever for Christmas. Uh, I stayed up all night playing Halo C. <laughs> huh. Oh man, I was never so tired as after like what? What was it? Uh, yeah, I had gotten all the way up to Pillar of Autumn. I had almost finished the game in one night. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all of this and more can be expected in our next episode. Which yeah, we've we've gone on so many friggin' tangents, but still, we will call this episode still waiting. Yeah, pretty much. Or pray, pal. <laughs> Still waiting for Prey, pal. How about that? Take care, guys. Look out for future episodes. Um, if you hate Andy, please send him hate mail at... What was, what was your uh, YouTube account name? Uh, Silent Netsis 13 or Netsis Silent 13. I'm not entirely sure anymore. Let me check. <laughs> I have not actually checked this. Look, this guy wants to make sure you are heard. <laughs> Uh, or you could just provide a link to uh, my channel on your video again. Or I can Once do that. Again, or if you just want to make it completely public, you can harass him in the comments below on this video. Oh, totally. Totally. Dude, And I want uh, to. once again, uh, expect another video that I may be doing as I've gotten a, uh, a Pebble watch and definitely suggest to a lot of people to check it out. But for right now, Platypus, everyone. <laughs>